Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the Internet, thanks to the marvel of technology. I'm coming at you live from my little old guest house, as you can see. In Memphis, Tennessee, this is Keith Anthony Blanchard. You listen to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and reinforcement radio for the soul and the transformation station a couple of announcements really big announcements metaphysics returns to memphis august 5th and 6th at the agri international center with the memphis metaphysical fair the memphis metaphysical fair will play host to psychic mediums tarot card readers crystal and stone healers and vendors and it's a native american motif paranormal investigating and 20 workshops over the two days august 5th and 6th at the Agri International Center in Memphis, Tennessee, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Ten dollars for one day adult pass and 16 for both days. You get a little discount. Why not? Uh, military discounts are available. Children under 12 are free, so you little rugrats can move about freely and bother some of the people in the vending booths by picking up those stones. <laughs> so bring them along. You can bet it's going to be a lot of fun. Vending booths, as of as I know of, as of now, are still available. You can find out more information at memphismetaphysical.com. Kenneth Pass. He was a recent guest here in the Center of Light Radio. We're trying to raise money for him so he can get to Arizona. We're going to get him a bus ride. We're almost at our goal. Our goal is $500. Kenneth was a recent guest, and um, when Kenneth was a young boy, let's say about seven or eight years old, he's on a camping trip with some of his friends as well as some of the chaperones and guides, and they took a hike. And a few miles into the hike, they were abducted. Now, listen to this. I know this sounds far-fetched, but I tend to believe Kenneth. I do. He's a very simple guy. Um, he was brought back 10,000 years. Have you ever heard of Prophecy Rock in Arizona, I believe? Well, the pictographs that you see on Prophecy Rock, Kenneth says he is one of those children come out of that spacecraft. So the deal is, while he was gone for two years and brought back to present moment when he finally did come back, uh, one of the aliens pissed him off. So he found a piece of powerful technology, and he hid it. Now, Kenneth wants to go back to Arizona to find this piece of technology and bring it to the Hopi and the Pueblo, and he's going to log his experience. He's going to come back to Center of Light Radio for round two. That should make for a phenomenal show. Go to centerofrightradio.com, and you will see a bunch of moving stuff, but once the page settles, you'll see a flying saucer, <laughs> and underneath that, you will see a donate button. Click on that button, and please feel free to donate five bucks. Buck, whatever it takes. We're almost to our goal. This man right here, Swanji Viswayogi, God-realized man from India, is going to be coming back on Center of Light Radio September 13th. I had the blessed, wow, it's <laughs> opportunity to interview this man twice so far and had the blessed opportunity to be in his space. Um Lucky me. It is so powerful. It's not something to be said. It is something to be felt. And I don't want to sully nor soil it anymore by talking about what it's like to be in the presence because it's something you have to see happen off of me to <laughs> really get what my words are trying to convey very poorly at that. So Center of Light Radio is going to have Swamji Visvayogi September 13th. The theme for his tour this year is healing the earth by purifying the water. So I better come up with some pretty powerful uh, questions being the spokesperson for humanity to be able to speak to god if you will believe it um that's september 13th uh, i got a, i got stuff everywhere so we got some new technology so bear with me for a second hello everyone in the chat room starlight don daniel uh dana trotter uh i'm in the chat room uh, hello keith how you doing um let's let's see any more announcements no 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 we're not going to get you more announcements we're going to get down to center of light radio business also uh real quickly if you are interested in my best-selling book right here the Divine Principle, Anchor in Heaven on Earth. You can also find that purchase at centeroflightradio.com, or you can get it on Amazon. But if you go through centeroflightradio.com, it will take you to Amazon, a trustworthy source for buying your books, especially uh, spiritual books. Everybody wants to be enlightened. So it's kind of the new thing, and I really, really dig that. I keep seeing people, you know, getting their spiritual groove on more and more and more. Let me tell you, it's time to get down. Y'all listen to this. Time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. My guest today is Dr. Ed Vige. Let me tell you about her. The show's titled, You Are Not Crazy, You Are Awakening. <laughs> Dig that. 
Dr. Eric Veach is a metaphysical practitioner, light code activator, author, and spiritual mentor. As a light code activator, her work is done on a cellular level, raising your frequency through the light language. Ooh, I had somebody on Center of Light reading about light language. Dig that. Reaching deeper into your core to clear old memories and programs and to activate your consciousness and you as a multidimensional being. These light codes will help you to unlock your divine blueprint awakening your dna and activation of your crystalline light body we are going to have a great time having a dialogue that's for sure her award-winning book you're not crazy your awakening will change the way you see the awakening while answering the age-old question of are we alone dr ed Vige, has an affiliate program through her Light Body Academy, which is a monthly recurring, recurring membership with three different levels that pays 20%. I don't know if that was supposed to read that. That was something for me. Uh, you can find more of my guests at triple W Doctor. That's, that would be D R E D W I G dot com. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Dr. Ed Beach. Hello, Keith. <laughs> I'm still trying to get that name in my head, so please forgive me. Not a problem, not a problem. It's Edvige. Just think French. Let it roll off the tongue. Edvige. Come on. Ah. <laughs> right. Love it. So, Love it. Uh, first of all, you contacted me, I, I think I'm correct, to be on Center of Light Radio. And I looked at some of your work as much as I can because I'm probably as busy as you. Um, but tell me how this all got started for you. How did you come to write a bestseller or award-winning book? You know, it all got started, quite honestly, as a child. Um, but the book itself, On This Path of Awakening, um, gosh, I was at a workshop in Arizona, and someone walked up to me and said, are you writing yet? And I said, no, I don't write. And so I just ignored that. And then about six months or so later, um, here in the Henderson, Las Vegas area, someone approached me and said, they want you to know that you are loved. Are you writing yet? And I said, no. Um, I don't write, but thank you for the love, right? And this was years and years and years ago. Um, and then a third time, several months after that, I was on the phone with someone who at that time channeled Michael. And Michael said, it is within your blueprint you are to write. And you will be known through the front door, meaning you will be known for your spiritual work and who you are. <gasps> Confirmation. And I said, well, what am I writing about? And he said, you will know. So now let's go back to 2004 in a car accident. And I go into the light and a voice says, you're here to be the light. And then from that moment, beings started to show up. Still points started to come into my room. They would touch me. They would bring me off planet. And all sorts of things began to happen to turn me on. And hence the book. They gave me the title, in fact. But the spiritual part actually began as a little girl because I could see ghosts and spirits and things from childhood. And I was about 12 years old when this particular being that wasn't a ghost, was an actual dimensional being from the Council of Twelve, came into my room and he started visiting with me for six years. Um, I would see me sleeping in bed and yet very conscious, very aware of myself hovering, looking down at me sleeping and out the window I would go, we'd go flying to the cosmos, I'd land on a bridge and dive into the depths of the ocean. And so that happened for six years ongoing, showing me this path that I came in with no life lessons and no karma, but that I held the templates and that I was eventually going to turn them on and be able to activate and clear. And, and here it is, here I am. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like my life. I, I, literally, literally, I was contacted by the Council of Twelve, the Council of Nine, and all these different far out, far in light yeah. beings. And I were, I'm telling you, you just recited my entire process. So 
So, okay, right after the car accident, laying there in bed in the wee hours of the morning, a still point, the first still point came in. It was bright white light. It was blinding. I could see it with my eyes open. I could see it with my eyes shut. It turned into pictures when it got right in front of my face. I said, what's that? They said testing. About 10 days later, an ultraviolet light came in. It stopped in front of my face. It turned to the pineal gland. It grew in intensity and it boing and everything opened. Um, and literally this continued it was absolutely amazing. I mean, the ETs would walk into my room. <laughs> I'm like, hello, where are we going? Um, so from the angelic realm to the ETs, you name it, they've come in to my room. They've taken me off planet. And then what did this lead to, right? Because we're here doing this work, right, Keith? Um, in 2012, right, I watched as my, and you know you have different stages of your light body, the blue light body, the violet body, all of these bodies of purification and so on, leading up to the white light body. Literally, I lay there in bed in about a 12-hour process as I watched my white light body descending, and it moved into me. And once that happened, then the templates that I hold, and there we go, <gasps> the templates that I hold for all <laughs> the star seeds started to turn on. <gasps> and then that continued me on the path of ascension, <gasps> right? And somewhere around 2015 in the desert, doing sacred ceremony as we do, <gasps> my I am began the dissension into me. And I finalized Ascension, <gasps> Woo, the seven initiations last year, and my I am is actually within me. That's that light language coming out. <gasps> and she is the Cosmic Mother. <gasps> Whoa. And if I start to just, it's going to become so energetic. There is no <laughs> energy flowing off my fingertips. And there you have it. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm so moved by that. Let me ask you, when these things begin to happen to you, and these portals, these doorways, these chakras would begin to open, did you ever hear a pop? Oh, my. So, you know, <laughs> there's so many things going on. It's crazy. So popping, not only popping, but there would be weeks at a time where I would hear this high frequency and these noises like a transmitter being dialed in. And I would turn everything off in the house. I'm like, where's this noise coming from? And it was internal. It was coming from inside. So, yeah, there's fine tuning. There's frequencies. There's the popping. All of that I heard. Um, also, closing my eyes and seeing colors, I would see a kaleidoscope of colors just spiraling around, forming concentric circles, moving, just beautiful, so expansive. Then, of course, let's add the electrical part, right, where you're starting to feel very electrical. I remember one time these six beings, these dimensional beings that would surround me and literally have been with me from childhood would come in. And literally, I remember it was May of 2012 as they were preparing me to receive this white light body and to turn on the templates of all star seeds. They literally plugged something into me and I jumped and I said, I'm not sleeping tonight, am I? And every hour on the hour, these six beings came in. They surrounded me and plugged in again. And then the next hour, they came and they plugged in again all <laughs> night long. So it's extremely electrical. Your light body is electrical. It's the multidimensional vehicle that needs to be in and fully activated so that your I am. M can then make its dissension into you, and that is ascension, and it requires these initiations. It requires kundalini activation, merkaba activation. So you're speaking really about the merkaba. Was, yeah, that was, that's where I was going next. You're speaking about the merkaba, and I know what it's like to be plugged into the cosmic system. The 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 electrical buzz that happens. For example, even, even some of you out there who might be doing meditation, as you begin to move the breath, breath is life, God is breath, um, you, you begin to to feel that buzz when you do 
you are actually becoming aware of your light body. That's why you're feeling the buzz. And the more you do, the more you begin to settle into the light body. But yes, I know that very, very well. Yeah, yeah. And the different levels of it, right? So each one has to activate, if you will. Um, it's amazing and fascinating. And then to understand the initiations. Um, so if you will, right, it's all a process. And you have to master the physical. That's the first initiation. Then there's the mastery of the emotional body, right? All of the lifetimes of trauma, drama, lack, fear, guilt, shame, pain, doubt, suffering, all the dysfunctionalities that we've taken on and mastered. All of those things have to be transmuted. And as we begin to transmute those things, then we open up as a vessel and we can receive more light. So that's all a part of the process as you're mastering that. Then you have to go through the third initiation, which is the mental body. Even through the even understanding, right, that your mind is not you, just like your hand is a part of you, but your hand does not control you, it's not you. Same thing with the mind and understanding and going into the subconscious and all of these different aspects we have to begin to master. And just as we think we have all these things mastered, ah, then that little thing called the darkest night of the soul or the surrender or the letting go needs to happen. So all of this also correlates to the initiations or the 10 stages of consciousness, if you will. And once you let it all go and you surrender, now your soul, your higher self knows, yes, you are right on your ascension path. Now we can begin to work at the higher levels of you as a multidimensional being, beginning to calibrate, to get codes and keys on within you so that you have soul merger. And now you can have the light body and then you can have your monadic merger. So all these things need to happen. So when you are having these moments, to use the word, these expressions, these oh, kind of big moments, is this yeah. part of your higher self that's moving through you and you can't yeah. contain it? Because I know what it's like when I begin to when I begin to channel at first, I would go into these crying spells for at least two minutes. It's because my body has not felt that level of love at at that time in my life. And mm -hmm. the reason I would cry, as I was told in meditation, was because it was a way of burning off the energy because it was just too powerful for me to keep inside and just not do anything with it. Is that what it's like for you? And do you are you able to turn this off? I mean, like, or are you walking down the street and all of a sudden you gasp for him and people say, so every, so every confirmation, because there's no separation and that's just how source flows and the light. So every confirmation gives me that. So there is no doubt. And then when I do the work, it gets really intense. I mean, if you want to see intense, <laughs> Let me do some, you know, a process or something, and it's intense. I've actually had people levitate. That's how intense the flow flows through me as me. And so there is no turning it off. And, yes, in public, I can be at lunch with someone. I'll give you an example. At lunch with <laughs> friends, and they said, oh, mother. I'm like, yes, oh, no, what's coming? Um. I think I still have some things to clear. I'm like, why would you say that now? I'm attempting to eat in peace. Nope. It goes right into action and begins to clear and calibrate. And right there in the restaurant, all of the energies are flowing through me and there's no controlling it. But, you know, again, Keith, isn't it about we said yes. And in saying yes, we accept responsibility that source is within flowing through us and really i think it's more important to be the light to be of service and to stand in that and however it looks to others that's their issue not ours bingo very well said i yeah i know what it's like to be in that position to yeah. be in a moment of expressing expressing exactly who you are and how other people see that like wayne dyer says how other people see and talk about you is none of your business <laughs> amen to that right. amen right. to that it's right. so right. true yeah yeah because think about it we are the ones that we've been waiting for this is it this is absolutely amazing you know um <laughs> 
it's wonderful to behold, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trade this for all the gold in the world. This is beautiful. And to know that I'm connected, to know that I'm exactly where I am doing and being who I am called to be and to be this divine feminine mother. <gasps> ah, is beautiful. <laughs> I already know the answer, but I want to ask you anyway, for the listening audience, those who may be conscious newbies on the path, okay. what does it feel like to be you? Wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. Right? It's right. very interesting. Okay, so this is very interesting. They have source <gasps> has assigned 12 people around me, all gifted people, literally that I have to call on morning, noon, or night, because I will expand and transmit frequencies out to the planet, and I just turn on, and it's transmitting, and I will have to get one of them on the phone to help anchor, to bring me back. So literally a couple of weeks ago, I'm on the phone with one, and she's like, oh, my goodness, um, we need to get this other person on because the galactics are now in. <laughs> This is my everyday life, folks. And so we get him on the phone and the galactics come in and literally the galactics are pushing me back in my body saying, we understand your sacrifice, wow. but we still need you here. You see, because when you have your rainbow light body, you can leave. <gasps> and Sonic Kimura came and showed me, right, my home. <gasps> However, because of who I am, holding this energy of the Cosmic Mother for this universe, <gasps> I have to be in the physical to now anchor the light and, well, stuff that I can't even go into on the call. <laughs> and so it's daily understanding that sacrifice and daily being of service to hold that light, I mean, oh, my God, it's like, can you feel it <laughs> just coming through? I can, actually. And just understanding that my life is not mine and that it's here to be that divine essence that is within. And that's it. And it's 24-7. My husband knows it. He supports. He's a time jumper. He has literally jumped timelines to find safe passage for me. Wow, I would definitely like to interview this guy. When you say the galactics come in, do you mean galactics in the form of embodied uh, beings or disembodied beings? Or they have the ability to be either way. I mean, they can shift out. Yeah, they can be in just energetically or holographically where you see them, right? Yes. And what, I what, mean, what, literally, what, what I have did you been, name? Did you say Arcturians? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. Then they're, they're uh, yeah. They come. The angelic realms, the Arcturians, they come in, and they're the ones that were pushing me back down the other day. <laughs> yeah, I've. I mean, everyone shows up. There's a portal in my home, and they come through. Um, that's part of the job. It's like an me. old payphone with a whole bunch of people waiting in line to use it. Ascended masters. <laughs> yeah, you know. We do sacred ceremony, and you'll see all sorts of beings in the pictures, you know. And it's like, oh, hello. Um, they all come in. Kuan Yin's always in. Yeah, there's so many of them here. <gasps> so how, how would you suggest Operation. for those those who are listening to this, this audio uh, mm -hmm. all over the world, but also possibly watching this video and watching you in your moment uh, connecting and yeah. well, consciously connecting for us to see. But that being said, what would you suggest for those to begin to expand their light body? How can they begin to follow suit to one day live in the dream of heaven on earth? Ascension. What would you yeah. what would you offer? So, you know, there's so many different aspects to this, but the one thing is it's all free will. So here in this moment, you're choosing this path. And you're going to invite, allow, and anchor your higher self daily to become the divine director of your material experience. I invite, I allow, and I anchor my higher sovereign self to be the director of all that I think, say, and do. And mean it. And every day begin to tap into that. So now... This awakening, you have to be conscious of. So that means you getting off of autopilot, 
being very mindful of where you are in every moment. Stop living through default, getting what you're getting and wondering why you're getting it, right? You are the creator. And settling. You're the creator of your experience. And so if you're not liking it, what are you going to do about it? Because you're the creator of it based on your vibration, your frequency. So your job is to raise your light quotient. Right. So it's about stopping saying I'm making a choice now that I'm on this ascension path, this awakening path. And what does that look like for me? I need to get off autopilot. I need to become consciously aware of my thoughts because my thought, say a positive thought will lead you to a positive emotion and then will lead to a positive result. A negative thought is going to lead you to a negative emotion, which will then lead you to a negative result. So you being the consciously aware soul that you are, you're going to stop in the middle of the day and check in on how you're feeling your guidance system. If you're feeling good, then the odds are you're having positive thoughts, and that's fine. If you're not, then we need to stop. Why am I feeling this? Is this my stuff or isn't it? Right? Can I clear it right here? And now let me think a better feeling thought, set a clear new intention, and continue my day. So it's about us being mindful 24-7, even in that, dare I say, sleep state, which we know is 4D, right? We have to become lucid. I am lucid now all the time. In fact, I may rest or sleep, if you will, two hours a night, if that. I'm in a lucid state 24-7. I see everything pixelated. I see the energy of everything moving. In fact, <laughs> my experience on Mount Shasta in wow. 2014, so let wow. me share this story. This was wild. You're going to love this, Keith. Um, it was 2014, and in the wee hours of the morning, all of a sudden, I saw myself on a path, and I was in a long white outfit. And my grandmother, who had transitioned 30 years ago, all of a sudden was standing there on this path in a white outfit. And I'm like, Grandma, hello. And she holds her hands up, holding a glass vessel with a golden elixir in it, and she just hands it to me. And I'm like, okay, what's that? She told me what was in it. And then she was gone. I was back in bed. And all of a sudden, well, I got up. I ran to the computer. I looked up what the meaning of this spiritually was, and it meant to be perfect, pure, and impenetrable. I'm like, whoa, okay. Then Mount Shasta started ringing in my head. And so I called my friend that I do some sacred work with on the land, and I said, okay, Mount Shasta is ringing in my head. My grandmother just came to me. She gave me this glass vessel. She said, Advij, you're not going to believe me, so I want you to hang up, and we're going to tango back. And tango's like FaceTime. She picked up a box that she received the previous day from a magi that she works with in Egypt, and contained within the box was a glass vessel and that golden elixir. <laughs> All right. Lovely. It took them two years to make this stuff, and she said, it's time. So three weeks later, I was on Mount Shasta. Amazing. A lock. A lock came in about that big down here and click, 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 opened. A white wall came in and split the dimensions. I'm standing there. My eyes are open. And I'm like, what's going on? I then stepped into 5D with my eyes open and walked through all the stages, all the different levels of 5D. At one point, I... <laughs> And she kept her hand on me as I would pace back and forth along the roadside. Um, at one point, I started saying the Lord's Prayer, and it got faster and faster and faster off my tongue. It left. It went into the heavens, and one by one, the rays of God descended. I watched the golden rays. 
watched all of the rays, the pink ray, the cosmic love, one by one. And as each descended, it hit me. And from my waist up, I did an angle and came back around. And then the next one hit me and I did a circle and so on. When that was done, got in the car, we continued to drive a little bit. And I said, okay, I need to get out again. I'm feeling that I need to anchor. I would stand on the land and something else would happen. And we did this probably 11 times. <sighs> Towards the end, I stood up and outside and the kingdom appeared to me. Now this was breathtaking. This Let's hold that emerald. right there, Dr. Edvig. We went to okay. the bottom of the hour. Um, oh, okay. Would you give out your contact information so our listening audience can find out more about you and the phenomenal, <laughs> expansive light work that you're doing? Okay. So the website, www.dredvige.com, and that's dr. E D W I G E dot com. So that's D R E D W I G E dot com. You can find my book, You're Not Crazy, You're Awakening, either on my website or again on Amazon. And on my website, you'll find all sorts of things that I am um, services to help you expand. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio. Look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. So, my, um, the kingdom appeared, literally this emerald city with a big circular golden path, and I was standing there <laughs> in disbelief looking at it, and all I could do was say, oh, whoa, it was magnificent, and the lady that was with me grabbed my shoulder and said, Edvige, you don't know your way, come back. <laughs> it was magnificent. Now, here's the crazy thing. Even though her hand was on my shoulder, she sounded like she was miles and miles and miles away because she was still in 3D and I was in 5D. So then we get back into the vehicle. Now, at this point, my left hand is turning violet. And she said, the violet flame is ready. And I'm like, okay. So she hands me the glass vessel with the elixir in it, and I anoint my three third eyes. <gasps> and I stood out of the vehicle, and there was the violet flame hovering as it descended. Now, <laughs> I thought, okay, it's done. My I am started its dissension in and this was 2014 we drive back down the mountain i'm sitting there and all of a sudden i'm able to go in 5d and out 5d and in 5d and out 5d <laughs> right. this was wild so let me describe what it looks like 5d for those listening or watching you have 3d glasses and you put those 3d glasses on and you see how everything pops out that's what it looks like Yet now imagine that it has this golden glittery energy to it. You can see in through the tree. You can see through the leaf. You can see through everything. Nothing is held back from you. You see everything and you see this life energy flowing through it and it's popped out right in front of you. Amazing. So now we're sitting back down at the bottom of the mountain and as I'm going in and out at will, <laughs> this golden ball about this big starts to roll up my spine and hit my neck and it 
kept rolling up and it would hit my neck and roll back down. Remember the car accident tore two discs in my neck. So one of the ladies that was sitting next to me, she said, what's wrong? I said, there's this gold ball <laughs> trying to, it's rolling up and down my neck. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> right. And she says, oh my goodness, who are you? I've never been able to see. And yet now I can see it's trying to get past your neck. Relax. So I relax my shoulders. I relax my arms. And there it is. It rolls up as beautiful as it can be. It rolls up. It goes past my neck finally. It comes up to my crown and it flings out my crown in this giant starburst. <gasps> and then it was done. The following day, closing ceremony, <laughs> I'm sitting there. I think it's the Sacramento River, the, the water that flows through there. I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I hear laughter. And the children from the kingdom, the little people, came and grabbed each hand and brought me back to the kingdom. That was my Mount Shasta experience. <laughs> Next time you go to Mount Shasta, if you got a place in your car, I'd like to ride with you. <laughs> Uh, 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355 is the number you dial if you want to say hi, get on the air with myself or Dr. Ed Veach. From the chat room, DD asked the question, does the doctor use different vibrational tones for different chakra awakening? So, yes, absolutely. So here's what's really interesting. I will work on a person and all of a sudden, because, again, the mother that part is in, right? My I am. I will start to work and tones come out. In fact, we can do something to the heart. We can do a short little process if you want. Um, Absolutely. All sorts of tones and frequencies and sounds and the light language comes out. There is no controlling it because I am my I am now. And my I am <laughs> has free reign. So there's no controlling it, and it's absolutely beautiful. So, yes, <gasps> tones, frequencies, vibrations, all of that comes right out. <gasps> Confirmation. <sighs> so do we want to do a process? I'm digging it. <laughs> okay. For sure. Okay. So let's close our eyes, if that's okay. Yes. And everyone listening, watching, close your eyes. <laughs> Take a nice long breath in. And out. Again, in. And out. Letting all your cares go, all of your thoughts go. One more time. Inhale. Uh, and out. Do I have permission to work on you? I'll take a collective yes. <gasps> So we're going to bring in that beautiful golden Mahatma energy. Within the Mahatma is all, or all of the rays, all of the divine high frequency. And we bring that down. <gasps> down your cr crown into your pineal gland. And we're going to clear that resistance that's coming up for anyone who's on this call. Letting go of your resistance, letting go of those things no longer serving you. And breathe it out. Let's move down to your third eye. The pituitary. Yeah. <gasps> Ok, 
kishini na mara kumihira sa anare shi moku ku ni hapa mahare shi kum anahe shi mahura mahare kusu mahare shi kum ni hara shi kato and breathe expand feel yourselves getting lighter dear ones now we're going to move all the way down just feel yourself moving down your throat feel yourself getting closer to your heart <sighs> moving lower and lower and lower and now you're all the way at the bottom of your heart you're facing the back of it and you see this tiny opening that openings of vortex so just allow it to pull you in and down now becoming one with your heartbeat <laughs> there we go and way up at the top of your heart is this sacred space i want you to move to the tiny sacred space of your heart so feel yourself move up shift a little to the left and in <laughs> becoming one with your heartbeat there we go feel all the love the creator has for you allow that love to come in see it like beautiful rays of sunshine warming you ashni ha matuch kata in ya tu me kata ashni ha tu me ata chikata nare ichid ho then feel all the love that you have for creator send your love up in a beautiful ray and watch as those rays spiral together to become one for you are a divine extension of the whole perfect whole and complete in the sacred space of your heart where there is only love where you can only create for your best and highest good and the good of all concerned we're going to bring up any miscreation now that is ready to be released <gasps> to do so now ma chenna harma toshne ba kumirana ine no hira pa chikata ma hare so ine no hira sha pikdin ya tama a chikoto chikdin na re ipikdu mi hara sa kutuk chikata ikatu mi ati chikata ma hare isi kutu mi ata na hera chikoto pa kandi al sakat chikati ma re uchni apuma ine tu mi ata chikati bara esma kutu ya ne apa chikatu mi ata chikatu bhi chikata ni na hare pidi ni tu mi ata chikati gata ma hori a chikatu me hara chikati gata ma hari a chikatu ine no hara sa kutu bika tikati gata ma hori ata ma hari chikatu mi ati ma hara shinne no hera a chimi kum mi asa na hari chikupu ma hari isi kutu chikata all of those feelings those emotions of not being good enough not pretty enough not tall enough not rich enough not wealthy enough not <gasps> loved enough ma no hira shimi no hira pakata nare sukuma let it go <gasps> now allow your heart dear ones to expand holding on to that love that the divine creator has for you mashino hori ana maharku sana let's bring in some of that divine those divine aspects of divine love divine joy divine peace divine will divine understanding divine brotherhood divine right relationship divine grace divine purpose matushinena <gasps> ah there we go and now just come back into your breath into the awareness of your body <clears throat> and when you're ready open your eyes ah any comments i loved it i love that you are quote full of yourself <laughs> in all the right ways you are so full of you 
You're truly present. You are there. You're passionately involved with yourself, which only tells me that the bridge, the road between you and higher self or creator is just a matter of shifting it, shifting your own awareness or shifting your heart. And I see that in you. I think it's important that the people, the listening audience, the viewing audience knows what it's like to be you in this moment. Though I did ask you that question earlier. That was from a different conscious frame of reference. What is happening? Do you feel like you're being overlaid by other sentient beings? And I don't mean that question implying that we're separate. But exactly. what does it feel like? to be you so they may have a greater understanding of the process yeah. that you're going through the language you're using because to some people this may seem kind of just strange which i think is beautiful it's yeah. a lack of understanding could you explain that to us please absolutely thank you you know and others will say oh are you channeling this outside entity no i'm not because think about it when someone channels they have to get out of the way right and then this energy moves in and takes over um I have merged with my I am and my I am being source, right? <gasps> the language of light, the language of source is the light language and all of the higher dimensions have this language. So what is it like? <laughs> you know, I take pictures now and you'll see the rays of God within the pictures. You'll see all the rays of God in the picture. You'll see me literally. <gasps> by locating you'll see a ring around me and so imagine always being in these higher energies feeling very lucid feeling very light how do you explain it almost almost like you're in a bubble and you <gasps> Yeah. And you're here, yet you're here at a lighter density. If you can imagine that, I know you can, Keith, <laughs> feeling yourself at a lighter density. Yes. Does that make sense? Oh, completely. Yeah, um, this is a daily occurrence for me. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I actually have video of me because, you know, I have clients and I have a video literally of my room filling with light. I'm sitting in a big sphere and I dematerialize. So imagine dematerializing, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. And uh, what is it like? Joyful, blissful and humbling all at the same time yes it's very and an much honor humbling. all at the same time to know that we made it to know that we've become the immortals to know that we truly are the ones that we've been waiting for to know that wow how precious it is to now be able to be operating as a multidimensional being and yet every morning choosing ah because i deem you know i literally in the morning when i'm laying there my whole body is undulating in this energy right and i can go and come back and to know yes i'm here because it's to all are wholly ascended and free is it not <gasps> All those who are choosing, we're here to be the light, to anchor it in. <sighs> yeah. Earlier, you had mentioned that for one to expand, they have to want it completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The word I use often is sincerity. There's four words for me. Passion is the active. It's the fire in the belly. It's the go ahead and roll up your sleeves and get it. The yeah. sincerity is, I'm serious about this. I mean it. And another one you just hit on was humility. And when you begin to touch said realities that you and I play with, mm -hmm. you begin to understand that if you close off humility, the whole experience shuts down. It's the humility that keeps the highway open. And the other one for me is vulnerability. Is Amen. becoming vulnerable. And people feel vulnerable. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's making yourself vulnerable. It's like taking your clothes off, making yourself available, knowing that it's okay to walk into that place where you're just very unsure. Walk your foot into the unsure place. I'm telling you, the door opens. Okay. Up. And that is key because early on, you're right, 2008, when they started showing up. 
not knowing what would show up from day to day. But to be in the space of saying, I trust and I know that I am loved and I know that this matters and I know, right, that thank you. I have the innocence of a babe. I don't have to pretend to know everything. I don't have to, you know, it's like even with the energies that I hold, even with the abilities that I have, I don't know everything. And that's okay. And it's precious. And so, yes, we have to have innocence. When it says to be childlike, that's exactly what it means, to be childlike, to not have judgment, to be in the space of your heart. Oh, my goodness. So this one experience, this was 2011. My husband and I, who just popped in, um, we had a water store. And as I was driving up to it one day parking, I got a flat tire. And I let this flat tire annoy me, right? It was a slight frustration, to say the least. And my husband had to go out of town. The tire was fixed. No big deal. 4.13 in the morning, because back then that was my power number before I started seeing all the sequence of numbers. And 4.13 in the morning, an outside voice. Now, I'm home by myself. An outside voice says, disconnect from an uneven temper. I'm like, who said that? And the voice said it again. (laughs) Disconnect from an uneven temper. And I said, oh, the way I behaved earlier today with the flat tire. And the voice said, nothing is to take you outside the space of your heart. So do you understand you do how important it is? We cannot be in judgment. We have to be innocent. We have to have that night that being that naive, that vulnerable, because that's the space, the energy of an open heart, a heart that is willing to receive the blessings, receive the beings and the guidance that's coming in from your guides, from your higher self. You have to be open and you must be in gratitude. Thank you to my I am for being in me. I do not take you for granted. Thank you. And it's being in that energy 24-7. Heaven on earth. <laughs> it is. And, and that's it, how and, you do it. And, you and know, that's I'm how you do it. For the listening audience who are fortunate to watch this in video, and mm-hmm. for those who are not, you, the fact that you're fortunate to hear an audio, if you could see what I see, and I watch this beautiful lady do what she's doing, she is passionate. She is in there for real. And she is anchoring her God self within her temple, within her body, and she's living it. That is how you become the duck. If you want to be the duck, you have to walk and quack like a duck. And she is creating an an example of how to have a disposition, how to have a dialogue within yourself, how to have a dialogue with creator who is within yourself, how to be. And when you can find yourself doing this more and more often, more and more, you begin to plant the light that you are at, at your essence into your body. And you become the embodiment of heaven on earth. That is how it is done. That's exactly how it's done, right? You have to let go of your baggage, folks. And as you go through every initiation, the windows narrows, right? You cannot bring that baggage with you. So you have to let go of judgment and pointing a finger. You have to let go of all those things that you thought you mastered in these lifetimes. That You know, it's like wearing them like badges. Nope. All of it's got to go. All that can enter is purity, purity of heart and love. That energy is what's going to raise your vibration. <gasps> it's, the only, it's the only way you can see. It's the only way you can be, a, the kingdom becomes visible. You know, I've always said, and I mean this correctly, it's like if we are in a lower vibration, let's just liken that to a disease, because it is a form of a dis ease we are not allowed to bring that stuff into a pure kingdom to where it becomes contaminated and it shuts down and everything just blips off the radar screen and the universe goes into non-existent it's just not going to happen so we have to become pure and thought word and deed 24 7 church is not on sunday at nine o'clock to 11 it's every day all the time everything within everything you think everything you do it does not stop Yeah. And that's the thing I think I alluded to earlier. You becoming conscious, right? You cannot awaken on autopilot. You have to consciously be aware 24-7 of self. 
I don't care if you think you're going to bed at night and going to sleep. No, you have to be aware of self all the time. Where are you in this moment? Are you here with us? Did you open your heart to receive these pearls? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I love would you say that everyone is receiving dialogue? I mean, audible dialogue. You know, I hear, I've learned in the last few years that every, we know that God is not necessarily about the light and the dark. It's an amalgamation of both. But it works for people to stay on the positive side of things. Yes. But that every, every thought that you have in your head that is positive, that supports you in being better and noble, is God speaking to you. <laughs> it's really that easy, isn't it? It really is that easy. And, you know, we have to really begin to be mindful of the thoughts, right? And there's so much inner work, and there's so many other aspects to it, you know, of course, the clearing, the, the protocols for different things, because there's attachments and stuff. But yes, God, this divine energy is pure, positive energy that you're either tapped into in the flow, or you're not. It's your choice. In any given moment, you can get into the flow. And the flow, all of the universal laws even work in accordance with positivity. So yes, when you're tapped into it, and you're in the flow, you're going to feel it. Those pearls are going to come. And it's so cool, you know, being musicians, right? Um, I love asking a question. Then all of a sudden, you might turn on the radio and you're like, oh my gosh, the song is speaking to me. And it's directed right for you in that moment. And so it's beginning to really be aware of all the synchronicities around you. That voice that comes, it may come that you hear it in an inside voice, an outside voice, it may come in the song. It's going to come to you in many different ways and you really have to begin to tap in and to be aware of how it shows up for you. But positivity is the key. Dr. Ed Veach, thank you for being, oh my God, a glass of water. A breath of fresh air here on Center of Light Radio. I, I, I absolutely mean that with all of my heart. I totally dug it. You're welcome here anytime. Please keep us posted. Would you give out your contact information once again and leave us with about a 30-second final thought, if you would, please. Okay. The final thought is you are exactly where you are supposed to be in this moment. Wherever you think your path is supposed to be taking you, whether you are supposed to be of service, it is you, the light, and that light is what you're here to be. And that will allow everyone to be that which they are. Allow yourself to be that which you are, dear ones. You are pure love. You can find me at www.dredvige, and that's D-R-E-D-W-I-G-E dot com, D-R-E-D-W-I-G-E dot com. Blessings to you. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it now. Again, I, I appreciate you. Please come back soon if you can. Absolutely. Everyone, Dr. Abij, what a phenomenal guest here in Center of Light Radio. She lit me up. <laughs> a couple of announcements. Uh, August 5th and 6th, make sure you attend if you're in Memphis. If not, come on, drive on down. We can hang out, watch me play some loud, repulsive rock and roll. We'll have a grand old time. Um, Memphis Metaphysical Fair, August 5th and 6th. Uh, you can contact me for more details. Or you can go to metaphysicalmemphis.com for details. Also, mm -hmm. September 13th. This divine incarnation of a man yeah. is going to be in Memphis, Tennessee. And I'm going to interview him. Um, I love being around this beautiful God being. It's amazing, the powerhouse that he is. Uh, that's going to be September 13th. Swanji Viswio is going to be a guest on Center of Light Radio. My guest next week on Center of Light Radio, check this out. Maybe you've heard about him. Dr. Eben Alexandra, he, he was the, the craze of some time back about his experience. He was a neurosurgeon. He went to a coma and he died in the book. It was called Proof of Heaven. So he, there's a lot of buzz surrounding this cat. Please come back every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchard. You can find me here sit, sitting in the captain chair conducting the affairs of the heart because it's all about the heart. When you sleep at night before you go to bed, if you have nothing to do, breathe, 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 breathe on purpose. Breathe consciously. Why, Keith, you may ask? Because when you do, that stargate will open up and you will find yourself living in a space of effortless ease for the rest of your life. When you can become conscious of that deafening silence, and in that, you will hear a dialogue of the heart. Find your way. Peace, love, and light. I'll see you soon.